second virtual Knoll tour and uh, the first thing that caught my eye this morning here on the Knoll Bunny Run was this antelope horn milkweed plant which if you've heard about milkweed um, they are the uh, host plant for monarch butterflies and they have this there are lots of different milkweeds and this one has this distinctive um, flower structure and these long narrow leaves which is where the antelope horn names comes from and you can see on this one we've got a couple of a couple of little monarch butterfly caterpillars stripy they look like uh, like bird dung and then there's that red and uh, that orange and black bug on top of that flower which is a, a milkweed bug a common name milkweed bug so uh, bird we just heard singing was a white-eyed vireo. It sort of ends and sometimes starts with a real quick sound. Some field guides or some some birders have called, have put a mnemonic to it of uh, quick three beers, quick! <laughs> And uh, white-eyed vireos like real dense, low brush like this. Oh, there it was again. And so um, they are not, they're, they're a summer bird here, and they are not a real common neighborhood bird because of their habitat preference for this low dense brush. You know, not a, very few people want this low dense brush in their yards, so uh, we don't get many white-eyed vireos in, in our neighborhood yards. The trail just walking down the trail for like the second, maybe third time ever on the Knoll Bunny Run, we just found this white-tailed deer antler. And um, it's mostly intact. It looks like this little tine here is broken. And that actually looks broken rather than um, chewed off. Sometimes you find these antlers and and that you find little gnawed marks in them from rodents like to gnaw them to get uh, minerals that they don't get otherwise in their diet. And, uh, but I see another crack here. So we just found this antler in, the, uh, in a rut here in the truck trail. And so my guess is that maybe um, uh, somebody driving down this truck trail ran over it and cracked this part and broke this tine off here but as you can see, it looks pretty relatively freshly shed. Oh, there's a little doodle bug, an isopod on it. Um, so deer, the male deer, grow and shed their antlers every year. Um, there are various uh, theories as to why that, why that evolved. Uh, why don't they just grow these big horns and then keep them all the time? Uh, nobody really knows why evolutionarily uh, that this system has come about, but it seems to serve them well. Um, and they uh, they grow grow a set of antlers every year. They're covered in velvet as they grow, and and uh, then the velvet dries up, and they uh, they rub the the velvet off of the antlers, and you can find rub marks, you know, sometimes on the trees and bushes where they do that. And then the males basically will use these antlers to. Uh, to fight with each other and uh, have their courtship contests <laughs> and uh, pretty darn cool that we found one today. <laughs> we just came upon these really neat pink little spherical flowers. I've heard the, uh, the common names for this plant sensitive plant uh, because when you touch those leaves they will fold up as you watch and uh, also the, I've heard the common name mimosa and this one this plant especially caught my eye because it has a dark caterpillar on one of the flowers, munching on one of the flowers. And uh, we've taken some pictures. And uh, one of the things that I haven't learned very much about yet are um, so many butterflies have specific host species of plants. And I'm wondering if this, is, uh, if this caterpillar might be a specific, uh, have this plant as a specific host plant. And with our pictures, we can figure that out later.
So we're hearing the call of a summer tanager. And the summer tanager is a summer resident bird that's newly returning. And I kind of refer to it as the other red bird in Texas. Our year-round red bird that everybody knows usually is the northern cardinal, but the male summer tanager is also bright red, but it does not have a crest, and it has like a big, long, bulbous bill compared to the cardinal's relatively short, conical bill. And uh, summer tanagers have a, this is their, one of their calls, but they have a song that's similar to American Robin, and they specialize in eating wasps and bees. So we're getting a really clear song now of another Carolina wren singing somewhere down the hill. I mentioned before Carolina wrens are year-round little brown birds with a white stripe over their eye and they're very loud for their size. And their song has some variation but it always is just five or six syllables just repeated in one part. Uh, now we're hearing a white-eyed vireo, and the Carolina wren seems to have stopped singing. But we got some good snippets of that. We got some, some good examples of that Carolina wren. One, way, one great way to tell the Carolina wren song apart from the Northern Cardinal is um, that the Car Carolina wren song, like I said, will always just have a single part, just five or six syllables repeated over and over. Uh, and the Northern Cardinal, will often have two or three parts to the song. The, the cardinal will start out with one pattern and switch to another, and then sometimes even a third. And that's one way you can distinguish uh, Northern Cardinal song from Carolina Wren song. So we're hearing another bird singing in these quick little phrases, musical phrases. Beauty, beauty, beauty. That's a red-eyed vireo. That's another returning summer bird that we're just starting to see again. And with, that was a Carolina wren singing over top of it. Um, red-eyed vireos. Oh, and there went the summer tanager calling again. Uh, red-eyed vireos are um, riparian species. They really like dense riparian woods and they like to be really high in the canopy So we're hearing a doo, 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 doo. kind of sad sounding. I think so, it's maybe like an old rusty gate hinge. Yeah. And that was, there it was again, that was a lesser goldfinch. And we're hearing also a cardinal. So lesser goldfinches are year-round tiny little yellow birds. The males are brilliant black on the top and yellow on the bottom. And um, uh, you can hear their songs often all year long. But they, of course they sing more in the summer and the spring. Um, and a lot of people don't know that uh, they can be imitators too. Sometimes when a male gets going singing you can pick out a lot of other bird songs in their songs, sort of like a mockingbird. But mostly they make these, this kind of sad, plaintive, Dee. lazy, long drawn out whistles. So we're hearing a red-eyed vireo singing and a northern perula singing. And a mockingbird <laughs> and a cardinal. The, the northern perula is a tiny little colorful warbler that's making this like video game level up sound, a rising, trilling, buzzy song. There it was.
and the red-eyed vireo is singing constantly alongside it. it has the short little snippets of musical sound they're both riparian species that are just here in the summer and they both like to be really high up in the uh, in the riparian canopy uh, riparian refers to near rivers and often where you get towering uh, species of trees like these cottonwoods around us these are remnant mature cottonwood trees that grew here before we dammed the river and it sounds like both the red-eyed vireo and the northern perula are in these cottonwoods behind me right now we're actually seeing right now a northern mockingbird at the top of this tree over here it's our state bird they're uh, they're good size they're in the mimic thrush family uh, uh, they're very uh, almost tame sometimes they don't mind people and they they're famous for um, for imitating other birds this one is quiet right now it might start singing while I'm talking here um, but uh, their song is composed of lots of other bird songs and when, when you get into birding by ear you can start to uh, sometimes when you listen to a mockingbird you can recognize some of these other songs they do uh, so this the single repeated note we're hearing right now that just stopped okay there it was again a little further away it's a black crested titmouse they're related to chickadees they're a common neighborhood bird they're here year-round black crested titmouse and uh, their song they make lots of different sounds like chickadees they have a really wide vocal array but their song, their quote song that they sing in breeding season to attract a mate and advertise their presence is this single note repeated over and over or sometimes it's a double note it sounds like Peter 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 so listen for that in your neighborhoods these days oh frogs yeah, there were like four or five leopard, big leopard frogs that were hanging around on the ridge here that all swam away or hopped away as we lifted the uh, lid to the spring here, this natural spring that has this uh, cement box that was built probably in the 40s or 50s to keep the opening clear. And we've never seen it go completely dry over the seven or eight years we've been doing these monthly walks. So we're hearing lots of northern cardinal contact call notes, these little pip, pip, chip, 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 real quick, almost metallic sounding, clean chip notes of the northern cardinals. And this is not their song, this is one of their calls, and they make uh, these calls to stay in contact with each other. It's just a, a way of, uh, you know, they have pretty strong pair bonds, and uh, it's a way of while they're foraging and maybe they're out of sight um, they're out of sight of each other but they can still know that they're close to each other by making these these call notes to each other and sometimes um, the call notes will rise in frequency and pitch and become an alarm if they sense danger found another antler this time much older and this one is covered and little gnawings, like the rodents have really enjoyed finding this and, and getting a little, some minerals, supplementing their diet with some minerals that they wouldn't normally get. That is really cool. So I'm gonna put that back down here. We've just completed uh, another tour of the Nall Bunny Run Wildlife Preserve. And uh, according to my GPS, we walked about a mile and a quarter over about uh, what three hours thanks for uh, coming on this virtual tour with me and I hope we can do it again thanks Michael